Hi friends, it's Monica and let's discuss my top 10 books of 2023. So this video was a little bit delayed and I was kind of procrastinating a little bit to film this but here I am and I'm really excited to talk about what are my top 10 books of 2023. These books are going to be from descending order from 10 to 1. Let's just get started to number 10 which is Hellbent by Leigh Bardugo. This is a sequel to ninth house in the alex stern series so this one came out right in the beginning of the year this is an adult dark academia fantasy series book one we're following alex stern who has a really troubled life and the reason for that is that she can see ghosts so alex is then contacted by yale university to oversee their occult rituals and she's the only one that can actually see and protect the students who are doing these rituals alex accepts this invitation and she finds herself to be involved in a lot of secret societies and in a lot of supernaturally charged situations <laughs> I really enjoyed Hellbent. It was a lot more smoother of a reading journey than Ninth House because the world we're reading about is already established and to get into our characters' lives again was very entertaining. Alex, she takes on more of a leadership role in her friend group and she's still very protective of them. We also have Dot who is the scholar and is like a mother hen to everyone. Turner is still roped into this and being very much the reluctant detective. And we have Darlington who is now dealing with a darker side to himself. I said this before when I was reviewing Hellbent that reading this book was kind of similar to reading a group of friends going on an adventure to hunt down monsters and that really reminded me of the tv show supernatural it really had that same type of vibe i also loved how how bent brings us to an adventure into the underworld with a strong protagonist who isn't afraid of ghosts or demons really the events of book two made me very very excited and anticipating for book three then at number nine is Shadows of Self by Brandon Sanderson. This is book two in the Second Era Mistborn series. This series takes place 300 years after the main trilogy and it still follows the same magical system. Which the basic gist is that our characters can ingest metals and that grants them superhuman abilities. Although with this new Second Era series of Mistborn, we are set in a more, I will say like western steampunk type of era but we still have history of the original trilogy. So this series is still very much high fantasy but we're now dipping into urban fantasy with emerging technologies and cars and guns but with magic. Also it doesn't hurt that our main characters are detectives that are helping to stop crime in their city. This sequel really did bring about a better balance than in the first book The Alloy of Law. I really like Shadows of Self because it really showed the growing political unrest among citizens as well as a new murder mystery that our main characters get to investigate and solve. Now our characters, they all coming from different perspectives in this book with Wax, Elaine, and Mirasai. With Wax, he is still grappling with grief and that pretty much plays a background role in all of his thoughts and actions. With Wayne, he is a comic relief character but in this book we get to see a deeper side to him. And with Mercy, she gets to display more of her intelligence, especially in a way in this society is not used to. And in this case, she is a woman on the police force. Book 2 Shadows of Self was a lot stronger to me than book 1 was and I'm very excited to continue on with this Mistborn series. Number eight, we have Legends and Lattes by Travis Baldry. This is the epitome of what I would expect from a cozy fantasy book. In this one, we are following a retired orc mercenary who is settling down in a new city and she wants to open up a cafe. With Viv the orc, our main character, we follow her journey into the city of scouting out new locations, undergoing the construction, figuring out the menu items, and taking feedback from customers and applying that to her business. And to see her interact with a bunch of other fantastical creatures was an absolute delight. Although this is a cozy fantasy, there are potential threats both from the past and present against the cafe and it's kind of fun to see 
how Viv navigates that now that she's a retired mercenary. And we also get a nice sprinkle of a cute romance thrown in there. Really, Legends and Lattes is what I consider a slice of life, a realistic depiction of how fantastical creatures would be acting day to day. And that just really makes me want to read more cozy fantasy. Then at number seven, I chose a contemporary romance, which was Yours Truly by Abby Jimenez. I love this one. This is a romance and my winning factor for this book was that it really shows how a relationship can be healing with a person with social anxiety. This romance follows two doctors who dislike each other, especially for Dr. Brianna Ortiz. She is recently divorced, but she is also on the hunt to find a kidney donor for her brother. And what do you know who is the perfect match for that kidney donation is our love interest, Dr. Jacob Maddox. These two characters, they are both grappling from past fair relationships and that kind of skews their view on love. Jacob is the one that has social anxiety and to see how Brianna puts him at ease with the beginnings of their relationship was very very cute and endearing. I really like seeing these two grow together as a couple and they really do show that it's okay to take your time to heal and recover from past heartbreaks. Then at number six I have Bear Town by Frederick Backman. This book is set in a small Swedish town called Bear Town and this community all of its hopes and dreams rest on the shoulders of their junior ice hockey team who are heading to the semifinals of their championship. However, once a pivotal event occurs, it really does affect each character that we come across. I really love this author's unique writing style. We really get an in-depth view of everyone's emotions, behaviors, and background stories. So it makes them feel very raw and real to read about. I really liked the buildup of the intense preparation for this hockey game and the semifinals because it's very, very important to all the townsfolk. But then after a pivotal event occurs, this is a trigger warning. So it does talk about rape. After that event occurs, it really does see the after effects of not only the survivor, but also all the rest of the townsfolk and how everyone reacts to that. There's a really strong exploration of strength, bravery, loyalty, family, community, and sport culture. Overall, Bear Town is a very intense read, but with a very important message of that actions can carry huge impacts on people that you know or don't know. Then at number five, I have another Brenda Sanderson book. This is Warbreaker. Warbreaker is a very vibrant fantasy story and with that, it's because of its magical system. In this world, God's rule and magic is very deeply integrated into its society. The basic concept of this magical system is that each person has something called breath. Essentially, a soul essence. And if you learn this ability, you can collect other people's breath and then that can grant you more power. We are following two princess sisters and one of them is supposed to be marrying the god king but a last minute decision switches which sister is sent off. Both Siri and Vivenna, they are complete opposites in personality but they are both thrown into situations that really test their abilities and it was really nice to see them navigate really murky waters. Warbreaker is one of those books that are a little bit more slow burn. You're trying to understand the world and understand the characters and really the characters do drive the story forward. What my reading experience was is that I really enjoyed this book and it was quite memorable. This one really did have a huge lasting impact and it really is a nice addition to the Cosmere. Then at number four, we have The Fragile Threads of Power by B.E. Schwab. This is the first book in the Threads of Power series, which is a continuation spin-off series from the Shades of Magic trilogy. This book series takes place across parallel worlds that are interconnected through the city of London. There are rare magicians known as Antari who can world hop between these Londons. This book still has the old cast of characters alongside new cast of characters. We still follow Alucard, Rai, Lila, and Kel and what they're up to. 
alongside our new characters Kusika, who is a young queen in White London, and Tessaly, who is a young teenage girl based in Red London with a really unique ability. This one, I just really loved getting back into the Shades of Magic world and to see where our old cast of characters were up to. This book does take place seven years after the events of the last book in the Shades of Magic trilogy. As much as I love the old characters, I really did love learning about Kosika and Tess. They both have very unique backstories and very fun and new fresh perspectives that we read from. So I'm very interested to see where the Ishwab will take us next. Then at number three is Lessons in Chemistry by Bonnie Garmas. This is one of the books I've been talking about so much on my channel lately and it did not disappoint me. This one has a brilliant writing and it really does show what it means to be a woman in society, whether that be in the 1960s or today. We follow Elizabeth Zott, who is a female chemist working in an all-male chemistry lab, but all her co-workers just see her as a secretary. Enter the innovative scientist Calvin Evans, and he's the only one to acknowledge Elizabeth for her brilliance with her research on abiogenesis. But years later, we follow Elizabeth, and she's now a single mother and also a host of a successful cooking TV show. The writing this one really stood out to me. It's very quick, it's very snappy. I really loved it so much. It's very easy to read. Elizabeth is the type of protagonist who is no nonsense and she doesn't take no for an answer. And she really does break the stereotypical societal standards that are being placed on women in the 1960s, like being a housewife, don't have a career, raise the kids, and all that. Elizabeth, for me, really did represent as a person paving the pathway for other women to pursue their own life goals, career goals, and to speak up. There are other themes such as religion versus science, the patriarchy, misogyny, and the simple strength of being a woman. I also watched The Adaptation, which is a miniseries on Apple TV. Very, very good. I loved it. <laughs> So I highly recommend the book and the TV show. Then at number two, I have Oathbringer by Brenda Sanderson. This is book three in the Stormlight Archive series, and this one is a huge book. It's like 1,200 pages, but I absolutely loved every second of it. This is a high epic fantasy series, and we are set in the world of Roshar where the landscape is brutal with its weather, wars, and politics. There is an ancient order known as the Knights Radiant that fell centuries ago, and all that's left behind is their magical and mystical shard blades and shard plates, which really grant a new way for men to wage their wars. Oathbringer was an amazing installment. It had so many moving parts, but it really did bring such a ferocity and intensity to this world. We see our characters face down their ultimate enemy, there's more interaction with other countries in Roshar, and we also see how Dalinar, through his flashbacks in this book of his youth, and how that really contrasted with his present day self. With some of the other characters, Kaladin, Edelin, and Shalon, we really do see a common theme among them with depression and anxiety as well as regrets. For me, it was very inaccurate description of how deep these types of emotional states can get you into, whether that be good or bad, but with all of those things I just listed, they can be categorically bad. Mental health is very important, I will always stand by that. Each of these characters, they face hard truths despite the pain that might come with that. And honestly, I love this installment. I love each of our characters so much. Even sometimes it's like a love to hate relationship of some of our enemies that we get to read their perspectives. <laughs> Overall, I really love the message of healing to persevere, to overcome hardships. It really did bring everything together in this book and it really did prepare you for book four, Rhythm of War, which I did read but it's not much hop done. <laughs> that book was a little bit more scientific theory for magical systems, but besides that, I am so, so ready for book five, which is called Wind of Truth, and it's releasing in November, I believe, so 10 months away, but still, I'm very excited. <laughs> Finally, my top book of 2023 is Jade War by Fonda Lee. This is book two in the Greenfield Saga series, and I did 
end up wrapping up this entire series as a whole this year. And uh, this series, guys, it's just so good. It's a adult urban fantasy. It's about two crime syndicates who control the island of Kekon. We are mainly following the Cole family. They are at odds with their rival clan and war is on the horizon. What makes it a fantasy is that there is a supernatural element. They are called Greenbones. These are warriors who are supernaturally powered by Jade. Honestly, this urban fantasy was really one of the best ones I've ever read. It has such a seamless blend of the magical element of, along with technological side of things with guns, cars, and computers. The island setting in general really does have Asian influences with its own custom and culture. The series really does take up that gang structure you would think and takes it up so many notches to make such an intense and action-filled series. There's a lot of rising tensions, consequences to many actions, and complex family dynamics. Book 2, Jade War, really did raise the stakes even more. For our beloved characters, you don't know who might just die. <laughs> the writing really does draw you in. You will love our main characters, but also love to hate our enemies. The Cole family, that includes Lin, Hilo, Shay, and their cousin Andin, they all have their own perspectives, which are all unique and have their own voice. All of them have fluctuating relationships with each other, depending on what's going on, but they remain fiercely loyal to one another. My favorite character has to be Hilo. He really does come off as an intense character. In Jade City, he is the second in command. He has a very authoritative personality and he can be a little bit unhinged at times, but he is a really complex character and I had a delight just reading his character journey throughout the entire series. Overall, the Green Mode Saga has it all. It has politics, family dynamics, a lot of action, there's a lot of supernatural fights, there's a lot of sacrifice, a lot of gang politics, and of course there is a lot of loyalties of being tested. This is just my favorite book of the year and ironically, or not so ironically, if you go back to see my top 10 of 2022, I actually did choose JC as my top book and now in 2023, Jade War is my top book. So if that doesn't say anything about the series, I don't know what will, but I really do highly recommend it. Those were all my best books of 2023. I really hope you enjoyed watching this video. Comment down below what was your favorite books of 2023 and I want to say thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to give me a huge thumbs up, hit that subscribe button down below, and don't forget to ring the bell to not miss any future uploads. And I'll see you all in my next one. Bye!